The Toronto Transportation Commission was a public body formed in 1921 to acquire, modernize and unify street rail operations in the city of Toronto, which in those days had a population of about 550,000. Within weeks, four New York City Fifth Avenue Model L open-top double-deck solid-wheeled buses began operations on the Humberside route in West Toronto. These vehicles linked the fast-growing junction area to the Dundas streetcars, which took passengers downtown to shop. Early double-deck buses proved to be inadequate for Toronto's varied weather conditions and regular makes and models were tested until a suitable bus was found. In 1925, the TTC established the Motor Coach Department. In 1927, they purchased 15 Mac AL buses, which seated 33 passengers. They were equipped with treadle rear exit doors. Shown here in a 1929 film shot from the then new Ford Hotel overlooking Bay Street, we see the buses being used as extras, loading passengers for short haul routes on the site of the present-day Bay Street bus terminal. While the majority of travel was done by streetcar, buses functioned as feeder lines. They would also be used on routes that would not support streetcar lines. The first air-filled tired bus began service in August of 1924. It was signed High Park Annette and ran between Jane and Dundas. Later the Jane bus would serve this area. All buses from this era were gasoline powered. After buying out the city's largest sightseeing operator, the TTC established its first coach route. The Hill route operated as a premium deluxe route from downtown Toronto to North Toronto at twice the regular fare. In 1925, the Forest Hill coach line began. These buses were painted gray to separate them from the regular city fleet, which were painted red and cream. And hence, they were referred to as the gray coach lines. As time passed, the TTC streetcar routes were extended into the suburbs and private bus operations in these areas were merged. With a growing number of acquired charter and sightseeing operations, it was decided on June 28, 1927 to organize Grey Coach Lines as a corporate subsidiary. Davenport Garage was built in 1922 to repair and maintain motor coaches operated by both the TTC and Grey Coach Lines. Ford Bus 566 was one of a handful of vehicles that had bodies built by the Ottawa Car Company. This prototype's design was a preview of the transit buses of the future. Operations from this garage ended in 1992. In 1937, the TTC took delivery of the first of what was to be 82 twin coaches, model 23R. These were the first rear drive buses with center exit doors that the commission bought. They seated 23 passengers. This is a rare shot of a twin coach on the Jane Loop in the early 1940s. Great coach lines also had a number of these buses that ran on the hill route. They also bought three diesel electric twins in 1937 for the Eaton's Interstore service. The fare for this service was three tickets for five cents. During the Second World War, the most common bus used by transit properties was the Ford Transit Bus. In 1941, the TTC bought 20 transit buses to replace older equipment. In the 1970s, members of the Halton County Radio Railway bought a bus that found service in Kitchener. Students at Centennial College in Scarborough restored it to TTC 792. 
It was repainted in the 1941 livery at Hillcrest Shops and put on display at the Canadian National Exhibition. The only modern item added to the bus were the turn indicators. In 1944, the TTC purchased 18 36-seat gas buses from General Motors. This was the first order ever made with GM. Number 952 was one of an additional 15 purchased in 1945. The first GM diesel automatic bus was purchased by the TTC in 1946. By 1954, the buses sported a new livery. The first order of 35-foot GM buses had two large stoplights on the rear tailgate. Later models would have two pairs of taillights. These 15 coaches were built in 1946 and were the first modern design twins bought by the TTC. They were gas powered, sported a new livery, seated 34 passengers and had manual transmissions. The 44 seat twins were bought in 1948 to replace older vehicles A similar group of 10 twins were purchased in 1950. The TTC converted a number of gray coach twins for city service between 1952 and 1954. They were distinguished by their folding exit doors. The short twins were used on the downtown route 27 to Rosedale Station. This Eglinton-based twin is signed North Young. A number of independent bus companies were absorbed by the TTC when Metropolitan Toronto was formed in 1954. The TTC acquired a number of twin coaches with standee windows. Twin Coach Diesel 1733 is a one-of-a-kind ex-Danforth bus lines coach. It seated 35 passengers. One of these twins is seen at Woodbine Station in 1968. Perhaps the most versatile bus bought by the TTC was the Cancar Brill C36, which was built by Canadian Car and Foundry. They had three-speed manual transmissions and were gas-powered. In all, 70 36-seat buses were put in service in 1946 and 1947. This large order reflected the increased commuter traffic because of post-war population expansion to the suburbs. The buses were assigned to Eglinton, Sherburne, Davenport, and Parkdale garages. Later, a number of this same model, bought for Grey Coach Eaton's inter-store service, would be transferred to the TTC fleet. Ten Mack coaches, model C50DT, were purchased in 1951. They were the longest and widest buses ever received by the TTC and they were the first buses equipped with double stream rear exit doors. These diesel powered buses seated 50 passengers and were used exclusively on the heavily traveled Spadina route. Because they are 102 inches wide, they were restricted to a special routing to and from the garage. The Fitzjohn gas-powered bus was unique to the TTC. 45 of these buses were acquired from Hollinger, Roseland, and Danforth bus lines. 
On your right, a Fitzjohn is parked after being repainted in the TTC livery. They were mainly used in the city's east end and in Scarborough. Between 1955 and 1956, the TTC purchased 55 CD45A Cancar Brill buses. These diesel-powered buses seated 45 passengers and had automatic transmissions. They began their service life in the West End and finished their duties in East Toronto. The last five of the order had plexiglass panels in the roof for summer sightseeing service operated by the Grey Line. A windowed panel would cover over the center door and a single forward-facing seat would be placed over the step well. The longitudinal bench seats were removed and replaced by forward-facing seats, providing seating for 42 passengers. When their sightseeing duties ended, they were put in regular city service by reconfiguring the bus. In 1954, the TTC took delivery of 40 TDH 4512 General Motors 35-foot buses. They had automatic transmissions, were diesel-powered, and had two rows of green double seats, seating 45 passengers. Towards the end of their service life, they were used on Scarborough routes. Models purchased in 1956 would have pastel interior appointments and single stream seats. These buses would have a run number box placed on the door side in the front panel beside the turn signal. Twenty GM wide-bodied 45-foot buses were purchased in 1956 to handle increased ridership. An additional 60 similar buses were in service by 1958. In 1959, the city bus industry was revolutionized by the introduction of the General Motors New Look Bus. Affectionately named the Fishbowl because of its protruding front windshield, it has become a legend. This 40-year-old design is still in service today. Originally, 50 TDH 5301 53 passenger buses were purchased with the paint scheme on the left. Later, an additional 33 were bought and the modified cream face was added. The first models were distinguished by the square side marker lights and the silver sides extending to just below the windows. As time passed, bullseye marker lights appeared and the paint was applied to the silver band. When the new looks first arrived, they were based out of Eglinton Division. Ridership on all routes radiating out from Eglinton Station had increased and these larger buses were a big help in rush hours. Later they would be found on routes like Bay and Avenue Road. These 15 new looks were the only 35-foot long GM buses ever bought by the TTC. They were the only TTC fishbowls to have a single stream exit door. They seated 45 riders and at first were based out of Parkdale and Sherburne garages. This 35-foot fishbowl is in service on the Runnymede route. Only the early model fishbowls had this type of tailgate. Coincident with the opening of the University subway and the abandonment of the DuPont car line on Bay was the purchase of 40 TDH 5301 GM New Looks. These buses had cream faces, roofs and rears, unlike the first order of buses, which were all red.
One of these new buses is in service on the yet-to-be-opened Annette ETB line, while another is an inaugural service on Bay Street on the last day of the last DuPont streetcar. Full diesel bus service on Bay began shortly after the AM rush on February 28, 1963. Streetcar service on Bay continued for a time with the Dundas cars operating to the docks. The loop was paved to accommodate the Bay Street buses. A panoramic view of the docks loop with Charter Wit 2766 and the Bay bus can be seen from the off-ramp of the Gardner Expressway. Thirty-five 96-inch width buses, ten of which had the same tailgate, were ordered in 1962 and 1963 to conform with provincial regulations for transit vehicles operating outside the metropolitan Toronto boundaries. This Mortimer Main 3100 fishbowl was based out of Birchmount Garage. An additional 80 buses numbered in the 3300 series with bullet side marker lights and a simplified tailgate were purchased in 1963. While the original GM New Look buses had the silver sides up to the window, this and future deliveries would have the belt strip painted red. This parade of the new buses, along with one old look, is carrying passengers to and from the Canadian National Exhibition on Bathurst Street at Davenport, looking south to the TTC Hillcrest shops. In 1964, 7553-01s numbered in the 3500 series were delivered in anticipation of a massive expansion and realignment of bus routes due to the opening of the Bloor Danforth subway. At the CNE bus terminal, note the single folding exit door on the 1500 series 45-foot GM 5105s. The later acquired 2100 series 5105s had double stream exit doors. The GM New Look's rear exit doors were blinker type, opening out rather than folding out. In 1965, the TTC received more than 100 TDH 5303 fishbowls. These buses were needed to replace the streetcars that were to be retired. They were the first GM fishbowls to come with outstanding windows. Instead of interior lighting from the fluorescent tubes running down the center of the ceiling, backlighting for advertising cards occupied the area where the standing windows had been. By the time the Bloor Danforth subway was in full operation, ridership had increased to such an extent that even more buses were bought. Aging vehicles were retired, and an additional 80 102-inch wide buses, as well as 20 5304 96-inch width buses, were ordered. In 1967, 100 5303s were bought with the front grille plates absent. To this date, it was the TTC's largest bus order. Along with the order were 20 96-inch width buses which were used on narrow streets in residential areas as well as the Port Credit, Keel, and Malton routes which went beyond metropolitan Toronto's borders. Take note that a second small taillight has been added to the lighting cluster. 